let's start with this new topic that is the D and F block elements. So let's start with the theory part. Introduction. Transition metals and inner transition metals are often used to refer to the elements of D and F block respectively. So can you tell us why they are called D and F block elements? Because the last electron goes into D and F block F subshells respectively. Okay. Now, there are many. Uh, there are mainly three type, uh, three series of the transition me uh, metals. Three D series, which goes from Sc to Zn. Okay. Four D series, which goes from Y to Cd, and five D series, which goes from La to Hg, omitting Ce to Lu. Can you show us on the periodic table? Yes. This is 3D series, 4D series, 5D series. Okay. And the 4th 6D series which begins with AC and is still incomplete. The two series of the inner transition metals 4F and 5F are known as lanthanides and actinides respectively. Okay. The transition elements have an incompletely filled D level since Zn group has D10 configuration and are not considered as transition elements but they are d block elements okay so you are trying to say that since d has completely filled d orbital so it's not regarded as a d block as a pure d block element exactly okay okay so let us now discuss the general characteristics of d and f block elements first we will study about metallic character Okay. They are all metals and are good conductor of heat and electricity. Now we will study about the electronic configurations. They all have configuration of n minus 1, d, 1 to 10 electrons and n s, 1 comma 2 electrons. As we all know that sc has an atomic number of 21, yes. ti has an atomic 22. number of 22. And it says 23. Okay, so we can calculate their configuration from the atomic number so there is a short trick in this the electrons in d orbital is equals to the ones digit in the atomic number like in ti this is equals to 2 and this is equals to 2 in v this is equals to 3 and this is equals to 3 there are two exceptions in this trick first is cr and okay. second is cu as the num as it has 4s1 configuration and okay. CU has also has 4s1 configuration. Okay, this is due to the stability of half filled and completely filled orbitals. Exactly. Okay, so let's now see the atomic trend that is followed by atomic radius of F and D block elements. Uh, atomic radii. Atomic radii decreases as nuclear charge increases. But in the end, it increases because the elect because of the electronic electron repulsion, and in the in the uh, in the starting, it increases because of the nuclear charge. Because nuclear charge increases, attraction increases. That's why atomic radii decreases. Okay, so at the end of the series, electron electron repulsion starts showing its effect. Okay. 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 So now let's see the ionization energy trend of D and F block elements. Uh, ionization energy. First, let me let me tell you about half filled and full filled configuration. These configuration are more stable than the other configuration. Okay, so you mean that D five and D ten configuration will be more stabler. Yeah, that's why they are more. That's why chromium and copper behave like D five and D ten configuration. Okay have d5 and d10 configuration now since the atoms of uh, are smaller in size the ionization energies are fairly high the values in most cases lies between those of p and s block elements thus indicating the transition metals are less electropositive than the elements of s block okay in a series the ionization energy increases from left to right but the increase is not so pro profound as in the case of S and P block elements. Okay. The ionization energy of 5D series element is higher than the elements of 4D and 3D series.
Okay, so now let's see the melting and boiling point trends of DNA block elements. Melting and boiling points of DNA block elements are high, which is attributed to the strong intermolecular bonding involving participation of Ns and N-1 D electrons. Okay. I.e. the metallic bonding is stronger in them. In, okay. an, in any row, the melting points of these metal rises to a maximum of d5, except for analogous values of mn and tc, and falls regularly as the atomic number increases. However, Zn, Cd and Hg, due to the presence of completely filled n-1d orbital, are not expected to have a co covalent bonding. Okay. Thus, the melting and boiling points are relatively low as compared to the other elements of this block. Okay. So this is the trend that is followed by melting and boiling points of DNA block elements. Let us now see what trend is followed by color in DNA block elements. Okay. So when an electron from a lower energy d orbital is excited to a higher energy d orbital, the energy of excitation corresponds to the frequency of light absorbed. This frequency generally lies in visible range. Okay. The color the color observed corresponds to the complementary color of the light absorbed. Okay, and you you mean that if a substance is absorbing violet light then it will be red in color. Exactly. Uh, now, the transition metals metal ions which have either completely filled d orbitals or completely empty d orbitals are colorless because they are not capable of showing td transition as when 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 d orbital is completely empty no electron is there to transit and when d orbital is completely filled and, and there is no place to transit so there is, so in the, in both the cases no dd transition is possible so that's why they are color exactly Okay, so now let's see that how nature oxide varies along the period in DNA block elements. Acidic nature increases when going from left to right. Okay. Uh, or we can say from going Sc to Zn. Basic nature decreases and acidic nature increases while going from left to right. Behavior differs when the oxidation states are different, like in the case of MnO2, MnO3 and all these examples, their oxidation are written below it. In case of MnO2, this is basic. In case of MnO3O4 to MnO2, these all are amphoteric. Okay, so they show both acidic and basic characteristics. Yeah, and in these, and in these this is acidic. Okay, so generally, if oxidation state, state of metal atom increases, acidic character also increases. Yes, that's why. Okay. Okay, so now let's see the trend that is followed by magnetic movement in DNA block elements. Okay. So, magnetic movement calculate karta hai in sub elements. Ke liye. Mu, is ka formula hota hai, mu is equals to under root of n into n plus 2. Okay, uh, kya sakte ki n kya hota hai? N hota hai number of unpaired electrons. Okay. Or is ki unit hoti hai Bohr magneton. Okay. Ab hum in sub ions ke liye magnetic moment calculate karta hai. SC3 plus mein configuration hota hai 3d0. To is mein unpaired electron bhi huye 0. Mein d orbital bana deta hoon aap ke liye. Okay. It's my electron unpaired electron zero way to is cup is car magnetic moment B zero I got because root of zero into zero plus two is zero now T I plus three kill a 3d one or unpaired electron B one over to fill is cup magnetic moment which is root of one into one plus two which is root three which is one point seven three now TL plus 2 के लिए 3d2 आता है जिसमें unpaired electron हो जाता है 2 इसलिए उसका magnetic movement हो जाता है 2.84 because it's root of 2 into 2 plus 2 which is root of 8 now V plus 2 के लिए 3d3 मतलब कि इसमें unpaired electron हो जाएंगे 3 
और इसका मैग्नेटिक मोमेंट हो जाएगा 3.87 पॉइंट एट सेवन विच इज रूट ऑफ फिफ्टीन नाउ सी आर प्लस टू सी आर प्लस टू का कॉन्फिग्रेशन हो जाएगा 3d4 जिसमें अनपेयर इलेक्ट्रॉन है 4 और इसका मैग्नेटिक मोमेंट हो जाएगा 4.90 पॉइंट नाइन जीरो विच इज रूट ऑफ ट्वेंटी नाउ एम एन प्लस टू के लिए कैलकुलेट करते हैं एम एन प्लस टू में होता है थ्री डी फाइव मतलब कि अनपेयर इलेक्ट्रॉन हो गए फाइव और इसका बो मैग्नेटिक मोमेंट आता है 5.92, पॉइंट नाइन टू विच इज रूट ऑफ थर्टी फाइव एंड ऑल्सो नोट दैट इट हैज़ द मैक्सिमम मैग्नेटिकल मूवमेंट बिकॉज द मैक्सिमम नंबर ऑफ अनपेयर इलेक्ट्रॉन इन डी ऑर्बिटल कैन बी ओनली फाइव नाउ वी विल कैलकुलेट फॉर एफ ई प्लस टू एफ ई प्लस टू का कॉन्फिग्रेशन होता है थ्री डी सिक्स और थ्री डी सिक्स होने की वजह से इसमें एक अनपेयर इलेक्ट्रॉन कम हो जाता है एक पेयर कंप्लीट हो जाता है इसलिए इसमें अनपेयर okay. इलेक्ट्रॉन अब फोर हो जाते हैं सो so, अब से घटने शुरू हो जाएंगे अनपेयर इलेक्ट्रॉन हाँ, तो इसका मैग्नेटिक मोमेंट फिर से आ गया 4.90 पॉइंट नाइन जीरो जो कि होता है अंडर रूट ऑफ ट्वेंटी नाउ सीओ प्लस टू के लिए 3d7 और अन, अन, तो इसमें अनपेयर इलेक्ट्रॉन हो जाएंगे 3 जिसका मैग्नेटिक मोमेंट आता है अंडर रूट ऑफ फिफ्टीन एन आई के लिए कॉन्फिग्रेशन होता है थ्री जिसमें अनपेयर इलेक्ट्रॉन आ जाता है टू जिसमें मैग्नेटिक मोमेंट हो जाता है टू पॉइंट एट फोर ओके जिसका मतलब होता है अंडर रूट ऑफ एट और सी यू प्लस टू के लिए थ्री डी नाइन तो अनपेयर इलेक्ट्रॉन सिर्फ बचा एक और बाकी सारे हो गए पैर इसलिए इसका मैग्नेटिक मोमेंट आता है वन पॉइंट सेवन थ्री जो कि होता है अंडर रूट ऑफ थ्री एंड लास्ट में जेड एन प्लस टू जिसका कॉन्फिग्रेशन है थ्री डी टेन तो फिर इसमें अनपेयर इलेक्ट्रॉन कितने हुए जीरो क्योंकि सबके सब पेयर हो चुके हैं अच्छा तो इसका मैग्नेटिक मोमेंट कितना होगा जीरो तो फिर अब इसके लिए मैं एक शॉर्ट ट्रिक बताता हूँ आपको शॉर्ट ट्रिक ये है कि जितने भी अनपेयर इलेक्ट्रॉन होते हैं उसका फर्स्ट डिजिट भी वही होता है जैसे अनपेयर इलेक्ट्रॉन टू हुए तो वे मैग्नेटिक मोमेंट का फर्स्ट डिजिट भी टू है अच्छा तो फिर जब मल्टीपल चॉइस क्वेश्चन एग्जाम में आते हैं तो आपको अंडर रूट ऑफ एट या अंडर रूट ऑफ फिफ्टीन कैलकुलेट नहीं करना पड़ेगा डायरेक्ट जितने भी अनपेयर इलेक्ट्रॉन है उसकी वैल्यू आप ऑप्शन में देख लो जिसका फर्स्ट डिजिट उससे मैच कर रहा होगा अनपेयर इलेक्ट्रॉन से वही आंसर होगा ओके ओके सो नाउ विल डिस्कस द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ सम इम्पोर्टेंट कंपाउंड विच आर फाउंड बाई डी एन एम ब्लॉक एलिमेंट्स सबसे पहले हम पढ़ते हैं क्रोमेट आयन के बीच में क्रोमेट आयन क्रोमेट आयन होता है सी आर ओ फोर टू माइनस इसका कलर होता है येलो जैसे कि आप इसमें देख सकते हो इसका कलर येलो से बनाया गया है अच्छा तो क्या हमको एक कलर्स याद रखने हैं हाँ ये कलर्स बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है ओके अगला अपन पढ़ता है डाइक्रोमेट आयन डाइक्रोमेट आयन होता है ऑरेंज कलर का और इसका फॉर्मूला होता है सी आर टू ओ सेवन टू माइनस ओके इसके सी आर ओ सी आर के एंगल का एंगल होता है 126. अब अपन पढ़ते हैं एम एन ओ फोर टू माइनस के बारे में जो कि होता है टेट्राहेड्रल मैग्नेट ग्रीन आयन इसका कलर ग्रीन है और इसका स्ट्रक्चर टेट्राहेड्रल है ओके नेक्स्ट अपन पढ़ते हैं एम एन ओ फोर माइनस के बारे में जिसका जिसका फुल फॉर्म जिसका नाम है पर मैगनेट आयन और ये भी टेट्राहेड्रल है लेकिन इसका कलर पर्पल है ओके okay. अब हम पढ़ते हैं सी आर ओ फाइव के बारे में सी आर ओ फाइव का स्ट्रक्चर बटरफ्लाई स्ट्रक्चर होता है सी आर डबल बॉन्ड ओ ओ ओ ओ ओ और इसका कलर जो होता है वो वायलेट होता है और एक और आपको बात याद रखनी है इसके अंदर कि जो क्रोमियम आयन है उसकी ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट अगर आप निकालोगे तो कितनी आएगी वो आएगी प्लस टू प्लस वन प्लस वन प्लस वन प्लस वन विच इज प्लस सिक्स मैनी पीपल हेयर गेट कंफ्यूज बिकॉज बाय लुकिंग एट द जनरल फॉर्मूला द स्ट्रक्चरल फॉर्मूला ऑफ दिस कंपाउंड पीपल गेट द आंसर एज प्लस टेन विच इज इनकरेक्ट 
and you should remember that its oxidation state is plus 6 in this compound. Okay. So, now, so now let us see some important reactions of KMnO4 and along with that we will also calculate the equivalent weight of it. Okay, so first we will study in alkaline medium. Uh, 2 times KMnO4 plus H2O goes to 2 times MnO2 plus KOH plus 3 oxygen. This oxidation is oxidation. So then minus 8 oxygen ki se, plus 1 is ki se, to Mn ka oxidation state a jayega plus 7. Okay. Or MnO2 ka oxidation state a jayega is ki se, minus 4. To fir, Mn ka oxidation state a jayega plus 4. Now we have to take N. N is uh, the number of the change in oxidation state. Which is 7 minus 4 is equal to 3. Therefore, equivalent weight of KMnO4 is equal to molecular weight of KMnO4 divided by N. Molecular weight divided by N. Which is 158. Divided, divided by, by 3. Now, I will tell you that this KMNO4 is reduced to MNO4 reaction. KMNO4 2 minus. 2 minus ion. And this oxidation state is plus 6. And this color is green. And in this case, this is insolu insoluble MNO2. Okay. Just color colorless. Hota hai. So MnO4 2 minus in is an intermediate ion that is formed in this reaction. And hmm. KMnO4 ka color is purple. Which is very important. Now, in neutral medium, mein bhi reaction is the same. KMnO4 plus H2O goes to 2MnO2 plus KOH plus 3 oxygen. So, equivalent rate is the same. Aayega? Haan. So, it's got plus 7 oxidation state, it's got plus 4 oxidation state, and is equals to 7 minus 3, 7 minus 4, which comes out to be 3. Therefore, equivalent weight of KMnO4 is same as previous case, and it's 158 by 3. 158 by 3. Next case, in acidic medium, KMnO4 plus 3 times H2SO4 gives MnSO4 plus K2SO4 plus 3 times H2O plus 5 oxygen atom. Now, in this case, we have the oxidation state. So, in this case, Mn oxidation state is plus 7. And in this case, Mn oxidation state is plus, plus 2. two. This is very important. And remember that in the acidic state, Mn plus 7 is plus 2. Mein jata hai. So, n so, n in this case will be plus 5. Yes. N is equals to 7 minus 2 is equals to 5. This means ki equivalent weight of KMnO4 is equals to 158 divided by 5. Okay. So we have to remember these reactions that MnO4 goes into MnO2 in alkaline and neutral medium and in acidic medium it goes into MnSO4.